Hey everyone, I'm Jerry Safran. Today on Kitco Mining, one of the richest critical mineral discoveries ever confirmed in North America. Patriot Battery Metals just announced grades of up to 26% cesium oxide across zones stretching over 600 by 400 meters, a scale and concentration that dwarfs anything seen since Sinclair, Australia's former cesium mine that shut down back in 2019. But here's the twist. They weren't even really looking for it. This ultra-rare high-value metal used in everything from telecom to energy to aerospace just happens to sit right in the middle of Patriot's lithium mine development corridor where Volkswagen is already a strategic partner. Uh, as the U.S. ramps up its trade war with China, tariffs rise and geopolitical focus shifts to resource security with allies like Japan and South Korea. Patriot may now control one of the most strategic sweet spots in the global energy transition. Joining us is Ken Brinston. He's their CEO of Patriot Battery Metals to break down what this means, not just for the company, but for the future of the critical mineral supply chains. Hey, Ken, great to see you. Uh, pleasure to be with you, Jeremy. Thanks very much for the invitation. And what you've just described is a lot about the complexity in the world that exists today. Um, but in the end, uh, we're pretty happy to be part of the critical, critical minerals world and, and lithium now, you've mentioned cesium. You know, it's all an important part of the premier geology at our Shackajohan project. Yeah, of course. And we keep seeing the news headlines, too. I mean, we see President Donald Trump talking about critical minerals. We're seeing what's happening in China as well. You know, this CCM discovery uh, is up to 26 percent over a footprint of 600 by 400 meters. How big of a deal is it in the global context? I mean, have we ever seen anything like it? Well, we couldn't be any happier with the results, Jeremy. It's really amazing what the, the team has de developed there. Um, the results so far. So what's intriguing about what's happening with that cesium discovery is the combination of those things you've just mentioned, the scale of the concentration of the assays and especially around our CB13 lithium deposit, but also the subset of it that is very, very high grade. So yeah, it's encouraging and we, we will do a lot more work to demonstrate its potential. Yeah, it's funny because, I mean, you weren't even really targeting cesium. I mean, we just talked about it. Patriot's obviously a lithium company. Uh, this discovered along with that corridor. Walk us through how this happened, but what it mostly means for the overall economics of the project here, Ken. Well, Jeremy, when, you, when you're drilling for lithium, you're inside what's called an LCT peglotide, a lithium cesium candelite. Egmatite. And and clearly what we're starting to demonstrate at Shagatawanan is amazing scale and grade in lithium. I don't think anyone's going to question that. It's one of the premier projects globally. But now we've got these really important byproduct credits. So hot off the press, a cesium discovery. There, there was always some potential in your LCT pegmatite that you're going to find cesium. But the fact that we found something that looks like it's got really serious scale and some high grade is a really big value add. And don't forget the tantalum or tantalite. That's another one of these critical minerals. And the average grade across our existing resource, approximately 160 parts per million. That's also right up there with, with the better tantalite resources globally. So, so yeah, it's a premier piece of geology, Jeremy, and, and we suspect it's got more to offer. Yeah, yeah. What a what a sweet byproduct, to say the least. I mean, what does it do for the narrative? How does it change for Patriot? Because, I mean, most investors think of you as a lithium play with Volkswagen as a strategic, but does this discovery change the scale or even the valuation lens here? It's definitely one that people should be paying attention to as we further develop the cesium byproduct credit. Um, I'd equally put the tantalite in there as well. Mm -hmm. They're both historically important products that are aligned with your your lithium mining objective and and in my history at pilbara minerals we had an important byproduct credit in tantalite and and it was it was not to be sneezed at in fact um in the development of our definitive feasibility study way way back 2017 um it represented about 10 percent of our revenue base so it's it's not to be ignored as far as these byproduct credits are concerned in reality they're going to be mined at the same time as your lithium or spodumene come uh, spodumene ore comes out of the ground so it's important that we continue to tackle the potential in processing these byproduct credits and that's something that we'll continue to carry forward as we progress the engineering in the shakajuanam project 
Yeah, yeah, it's just fascinating to watch. I mean, you guys have been working very, very hard over there. And I mean, when we think about it, given the tight supply and the specialized use of CCM, I mean, I mentioned atomic clocks, energy, aerospace. How quickly can you even evaluate commercial pathways? I mean, is there a, an existing demand that's starting to knock on the door? This is quite a rare metal. Uh, definitely. Uh, in fact, there's only one primary operating mine in the Western world, being the Tanko mine uh, here in Canada. Um, but it's coming to the end of its life. So that means there is people paying attention to what's going on with respect to exploration um, and approaches in respect of the potential in the, in the cesium at Shagajuana and are now part of our story. So, so we won't be surprised if people are coming to knock on the door and, and want to talk about it. Um, as we progress, the first thing that's required ultimately is a resource. Now, the good news is uh, because we've already been drilling for lithium, we already have a substantial database that we can draw on to help with respect to the development of a resource. Um, I don't want to be definitive about dates, but certainly mm -hmm. targeting a resource for cesium in parallel to the growth in the lithium resource is going to be an important next step because that'll help it define the subsequent engineering and what you, what you can extract in terms of value. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like a really important credit, so we're going to pursue it. Yeah, interesting. I mean, Ken, on the geopolitical side, the timing is really uncanny. I mean, as we record this, we've been in and out of these tariff back and forths in the U.S. and China are escalating tariffs. Trump is talking re talking to resource allies like Japan and South Korea. It seems like he's trying to bypass China, where cesium obviously is produced in most of it anyway. Uh, how does Patriot, uh, uh, this asset, kind of fit into that new global security map for critical minerals? I guess you could put lithium in there as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, they're all in a similar boat because of the dominance of China in, in most, if not all, of the critical minerals industries. And, and it's now incumbent on the West to continue to work on further diversification of those supply chains. Um, so why don't we knock on Mr. Trump's door and say, look, don't look in Ukraine. You know, Canada is also a fantastic home to to a lot of, if not most of the critical minerals, um, there'd be no harm in having a conversation with Canada about the potential to support North American and, and European interests. I think in the end, that's mm -hmm. basically the, the, the premier kind of opportunity that Quebec and Canada represents. We're in the right location. We have the right mineral species and it's Shakajawana and we've got the, the big three, you know, the lithium, the cesium and the tantalum. Um, in which case, clearly, that's a logical place to go and a pretty pragmatic solution for, for, you know, North American growth in those critical minerals and also Europe. So, so yeah, we'd suggest that in the end, even though there is a tariff story that's unfolding today, you would imagine just just logic prevails and Canada is a very logical place to be to be sourcing these key minerals that are part of the future you know, future growth in, in especially the US, but arguably in Europe as well. So we think we're well placed to serve those markets. Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, I mean, you already got infrastructure access, hydropower, year-round roads in place. And CCM is obviously stealing the headlines here, but CV5 still holds, you know, one of the largest high-grade lithium resources in the Americas. So give us a little bit of an update on the, the development, how the CCM zones, zones could enhance or maybe even accelerate that path to production here. Yeah, I, I, I can only agree, Jeremy. Uh, Shagajuan and, and the CV5, which is the subject of our ongoing feasibility study, um, the feasibility study is going to be completed during the September quarter on CV5. So it's basically a lithium story and, and, and it and will stand in its own right for the reasons that you've described, the combination of scale, grade, DMS only processing and of course low cost renewable power. They're all really important value adds to, to the CV5 lithium project. But in the end, CV5 is only one part of some pretty amazing geology that stretches over about 25 kilometers, most of which is yet to be fully explored. And look what happens when we when we spread our wings. All of a sudden, a big another big lithium discovery at CV13, and now cesium. So we just have so much confidence in the potential of that geology. It is really, really strong, and our cesium discovery is just another example of that. We would suspect if we keep drilling, there is the opportunity for more important discoveries in each of those categories: lithium, cesium, and tantalum. 
Yeah, not to mention the price. I mean, it's hard to put any prices on the CCM side. I was trying to do some research before, it's, it, but it's staggering uh, on that front. Uh, Ken, let's zoom out a little bit here. I mean, between the Volkswagen deal, the scale of the lithium resource, and now this CCM wild card, uh, what do you say to investors wondering if the market has seriously undervalued Patriot here? I mean, you've said it's been quite the time. Yeah, for me, I'm just an, an old mining guy, and I look at the geology and think that's that's always what's going to motivate the, the you know the first win in the mining world. And we have such a premier piece of geology; it's got all the combinations of those things that ultimately add value to your mining project: scale, grade, now pretty significant byproducts that are going to be probably part of the economic story around the project's future. But in the end, you've also got to think about like the likes of jurisdiction. You know, you're in the right part of the world. Are you adjacent to existing infrastructure? And again, they're all the things that that actually attracted me all the way from Australia. You know, to ultimately be based in Montreal and want to work on the Shakajuanan project. It is just such a premier project, premier location, and the economics around the project makes sense for almost any market, the combination of those things means that we think and are targeting Shagadawanan being a cornerstone to the future of these new Western facing supply chains that we'd expect to emerge to further diversify the, the critical minerals industry that currently, you know, as we said, um, is highly concentrated through China. So to underwrite a new supply chain, you need a big project to facilitate all the investment that's required downstream in, in, in our world of lithium, chemicals, cathodes, cell making, and ultimately car making. So in the end, Shagajuanan is well placed to be to be the key cornerstone to some of those developments. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be. I mean, there's a lot of mining equities that haven't been really getting the love. We'd love to see it start. And I mean, it's interesting timing, too, because Canada is obviously going over an election right now. And despite getting into any political side of this, one thing stands out. There is more talk about resource development. Are you hopeful that that will start to continue and to, to improve here in, in Canada? Yeah, sensible development, responsible development, they're all key cornerstones to our industry. And now you have the West, I think for the first time, seriously focused about what it's going to mean to support new supply chains and to further diversify away from China. So as you say, the, 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 whether it's the, um, uh, the political winds blowing on the day or whether both parties are now you know, mighty focused on trying to solve for the combination of new projects and especially where they relate to, to future energy and and critical minerals, it feels like we're we're on the cusp of a new way of development that's going to help support Western interests in those new energy and critical mineral spheres. So, yeah, our discovery couldn't be uh, you know at a more timely um, you know piece of you know history, if you like, for the development of our industry. Um, I guess the last thing to note in this area is to say that it takes a certain type of project to help in that aim. And, and in the end, we think Shagajuanan's got that. It's got the scale, it's got the grade, it's got the economics that ultimately support that, that future development of, a, of an ex-China supply chain. Yeah, well said. Uh, in exciting times, Ken Brinston is the CEO of Patriot Battery Metals. Thank you for joining us and making time with us today, sir. My pleasure, Jeremy. Thank you. All right, we'll speak soon. And for more on this story and the critical mineral assets shaping the global energy race, stay with us here at Kitco Mining. I'm Jeremy Saffin. For all of us here, stay tuned. We'll see you next time.